Joining us now is a man who is uh, back on the football field, and it's great to see. I don't know if he had a cowboy collar, but it did look like he was a little bit more jock Gosh, up yeah. top. Mm -hmm. He has an incredible golf game, obviously. We've chit-chatted about an incredible story. Has been a fantastic leader of the Buffalo Bills for a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, friend of the program, all pro po, Jordan Poyer. Yeah. What's up, boys? Yeah. What's up, guys? Hey. Appreciate y'all for having me on, man. Were you wearing you something different? This week, did you look different or was it just you? Just nah, like, you know, it's just me. You know what I'm saying? It's just me. <laughs> I'm out there. You know what I mean? My neck a little bigger this year, so you know we're just playing a little bigger. Okay, so, well yeah. I respect it because I was watching. I was like, <laughs> damn, Boyer looks bigger right now, and now it was more yoked yeah. than uh, anything. Like for me, when I get bigger, the guy's fatter. For you, bigger, it's more jocked. <laughs> Has that been a change? Are you playing at a different body weight this year? Yeah, I'm playing at probably about five to six pounds a little heavier. Um, you know, I feel I feel stronger, feel uh, feel great, man. It's uh, year 11 and just, you know, going through it's the middle of the season right now, the ups and downs, the the, the fronts, the backs. But uh, we're grinding. We're excited for opportunities this weekend in, uh, in New England. I know you got some Pats fans in there. so Only yeah. one. Only one. But he's trying to get the first pick of the draft, so he's actually pulling for you <laughs> yep. this week, uh, which is a much different yeah, get him. New England Patriot. <laughs> uh, before we talk about next week, let's talk about last week. So you guys had a pass interference to end that game. Uh, Giants got fucked. What are your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> on the game with the New York Giants, and uh, what a battle in prime time. I mean, what a crazy game. Uh, you know, Tyron came in and did what he had to do to keep the game close and uh, came down to the last play. Taron Johnson made a hell of a play. Um, ten out of ten times, I'm not calling that flag at all. So, um, we, you know, we won the game on the last play, and that's what it is. You know, the game comes down to the last plays most of the, you know, every game, every week. So, uh, you know, we were able to make a play on the last one and, and, and sneak away with the victory. And uh, like I said, we're excited about this weekend. Uh, another opportunity. Going to New England, uh, division rivals, so uh, we don't like them. They don't like us, so we're excited about it. So is it like Wednesdays after field goal or punt period, like period two is like, here's how we pass interfere and not get called? <laughs> oh. Is that what happens? I don't know. I don't I'm, not, really I'm, not going in, I'm not going into that argument right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I do, appreciate, <laughs> I do appreciate the fact, though, that that happened. It happens in every game. But whenever it's the last yeah. play, it's going to get spotlighted, obviously. That Absolutely. Giants team played you guys a lot tougher. You get out of there with a win, though. Who cares? Let's move along, right? That's the mindset? I mean, this is the NFL. Uh, I mean, you guys have played – you know, a long time, and anytime you can win in, the, in, in any week, you know, it's huge. It doesn't matter who's out there playing, a quarterback, who's out there playing. Um, this is the NFL. Uh, each week presents its own task, and you got to come in ready to play. And uh, to get out of any week with a win, you always it's always a lot better to win and, and have to learn from a win than have to learn from a loss. So, um, you know, we got we, we, we got the win, and we're like I said, we're excited about the opportunity this weekend. Go ahead, AJ. Uh, how big of a deal is it for you guys, obviously, to have Vaughn Miller back in the lineup the last few weeks and what he's able to bring to that team? And I'm sure as the season goes, he's going to get stronger and stronger and feel better. And Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, man. Just his leadership, his presence, um, you know, everything about who he is as a person, as a player. Um, you know, he brings so much energy to the back, to, to our defense, um, you know, week in, week out. So many new ideas, so many, you know, just seeing him coach the younger guys, Greg and AJ, and seeing, you know, how their game has even leveled up since, since Vaughn's been here. So, um, you know, such a huge asset to our team, not even just on the field, but off the field too. Just his, his leadership abilities, his ability to connect with the guys on, in the locker room. And so it's huge having him back on the field. And, uh, you know, we're excited to continue to see him, him, him get, get back on it. A lot of doubters this year, man, doesn't it? Do you guys recognize that or realize that? Like in years past, outside the building, everybody was Buffalo Bills are going to go win it all. This year, you beat the Giants, but you know, yeah, uh, you do that, really. you lose. Uh, you know, there's a lot of yeah. that. Do you guys hear that or how do you? Try you know, you know that's that's for y'all to talk about. You know, I, I have real. my personal opinions on it. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you know, we got it. We come in here, we work, and none of that outside stuff really even matters. It's just he say, she say. Each week is different. You know, and so you got to be able to have the mindset to be able to block all that. I know it's cliche, but really, at the end of the day, it literally doesn't matter. So you know, everybody can go out there and say this, that, or whatever about this team or that team or whatever. But, you know, what we do in here is what's important. And, uh, you know, we're just continuing to, 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 you know, Kaizen. Coach always talks about the, the, the phrase Kaizen, just continuous growth continuous just you know evolution and uh you know that's what we're doing that outside noise that outside noise i've been here seven years and i've heard that outside noise for seven years since i've been here so it hasn't changed and you know we just continue to work and continue to do what we do and uh ignore the noise how's the team feel this year obviously we talk about vaughn being back but how's the rest of the culture in there no nah, we're great man like i said this team has been together for a long time we've been through that we've been through hell and back literally um and we, we've, we've had a lot of you know 
a lot of things that happened in the past couple of years that have been able to build a callus kind of for our football team and, and be able to handle the ups and downs um, through a game, through a season. And so, you know, I, I, we're, we're a very strong football team and, and we got a lot of work to do. Um, I would think any team would say that at this point of the season. We got a lot of work to do, but uh, I believe we got one of the best quarterbacks in the game. We got the best, one of the best wide receivers in the game. We got one of the best defenses in the game. So we come ready to play each week. You know, there's no reason why we shouldn't be in each and every game being able to win. You talk about the calluses and being to hell and back. Like last year, the amount of adversity off the field for your team was absurd. On the field as well with Tamar Ham, Damian Harris situation. I mean, that was, I, I assume, like watching at home, watching you guys. Like obviously we felt for Damian Harris, but at the same time it was like, this Buffalo Bills team, like why is it always a super scary situation? What was the conversations like? When did you guys potentially know that it wasn't as serious as what you all experienced obviously a year before? Because at home we were all feeling for you, man. I want to let you know like everybody was very much feeling for you guys. Yeah, it's tough, man. Um, anytime you see anybody, it could be your teammate, somebody on the other team, um, you know, go down. And have the ambulance come out on the field and the stretcher, and you know it's a long pause in a game, whether it's you know five, ten minutes, doesn't matter. Um, you know, it puts a lot of things in perspective. Uh, you kind of think about a lot of things in that moment. Um, you know, obviously hoping that he's okay, hoping that you know his family is okay, and you know, and you know, and even throughout the game, just you know, hoping DH is okay throughout the game. Um, you hate to see it. You know, you play such a violent game, and it can, you know, that's really what you accept every single time you step out on the football field that that could really happen to you, and so. Um, you know, you just got to be able to, you know, be mentally strong when something like that happens. And it's tough, you know, having to go back after seeing somebody get, you know, put on a stretcher and you know, they have to go back out there and, and, and play. You know, that's probably one of the hardest things, I think, as an athlete, um, for me personally, uh, having to do, uh, especially when Dehan went down, seeing DH go down last week. Um, it's tough. But at the same time, you know, this is part of what we do. This is part of who we are. Um, we didn't, you know, I got word after the game that, you know, it might have been later that night um, that DH was going to be okay. Um, but, yeah, you know, you just pray for him and his family. And, you know, it, that's just it's, – it's, it's really tough. It's really tough to be a part of. Um, and I'm pretty sure you guys have been through it too. It's, it's scary to see, scary to feel. Um, but that's the reality of the game that we play. Well, I appreciate that answer because everybody at home was like, the Bills, man, this is just – it's heavy. Like, and last year you guys went through a lot of heavy stuff. And it's hard to win a game – a football game to begin with, let alone a Super Bowl. With everything you guys went through, I'm excited to see your team continue to build and grow because it's not easy whenever you got real shit happening right in front of your face on a regular basis. They showed tomorrow on the side. It was, oh, yeah. Yeah. hey, it was watching at home. It was like, this team, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know how, but we appreciate the hell out of you guys. Tone has a question for you. Yeah, Jordan, I don't know if you've seen this on tape yet or not, um, but I want to let you know, Mac Jones will and is not afraid to kick you or hit you in the balls, okay? And I, and I want you to be aware of that. Are, are you prepared for that? Have you been preparing for that? Are you going to wear a cup this week? What Have you noticed any of this? <laughs> no cup this week. I'll definitely be prepared. Um I don't know how to answer that question. Well, but, wow. Uh, it, it please. Yeah. Are you? Be a pro, dude. Be a pro. All yeah. pro, po. Be a pro. You're representing the NFL right now. Please. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, prepared. we're excited to play the game. Um, <laughs> Bet you are. Excited about the opportunity to go out there and play Mac Jones in his home stadium and uh, and make plays. You know, we're, we're this He is, does uh, this one here. <laughs> hey, when he slides, watch it because he yeah. does the cleats up at second base. Yep. And the cleats up at second base isn't try to take out a knee. He's going dong. Yep. You know what I mean? That's where he goes. That's his move. I don't know if you guys are watching film or not. Head on the swivel. We've seen it. We've seen it. Well, Definitely two heads on the swivel. They're probably what we're oh, talking about. Yeah. You might right. jump over them. Yep. You know what I mean? That's the whole conversation here. Uh, Chuck has a uh, question for you, Joe. Hey, Jordan. Big, big fan. So getting ready for, you know, teams coming in with winning records and, and all that stuff, and now you're playing, I think, the one in five uh, Patriots. Relax. You know, this week, and, and Boston's obviously not real happy about that, but – I know as a coach, getting ready for games like this, you're always worried about, you know, a letdown. Um, not, you know, thinking you're just going to show up, roll the ball out. You know, they're not very good on offense. They got a good defense, but they're one in five. Uh, it is Belichick. Has, has McDermott been different? Are the coaches uh, any different? Has the messaging been different? Do you notice a change, you know, getting ready for, for teams that uh, don't have winning records like the Pats right now? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, we always try to say, you know, each week it presents its own challenges, its own, um, you know, its own stuff. And, and it's always nameless, faceless opponents. Opponents. It doesn't matter, you know, if the team's out there, they're 10-0 and 0, or teams out there, they're 0-10. Um, 
the end of the day, this is the NFL. Um, this is a very well-respected coach and Coach Belichick um, and, and his staff and what they've been able to do over there. We've played them, you know, over since I've been here seven years. that would be 14 uh, or 12 times uh, in, in seven years since I've been here. So, you know, they know us and we know them. And so, you know, it's going to be one of the – there's no – you know, I've been in this, in this league long enough to understand there's no – you can't take any team. I mean, you saw kind of what happened last week in, in a sense like that. New York Giants came in and, you know, they they started to feel like they can play with us. And all it takes is just that little bit of confidence to get a team to, to feel like, they, hey, that we can play. And so being able to start fast in games like that, we always try to talk, hey, let's start fast and, and not even let this team feel like they can play with us. But you know, most, of, most of the time that's – it's not like that. And so just being able to handle the ups and downs, the adversity of the game, and going into the game, understanding, look, this is the NFL. They, get, they got good coaches. They got good players. We got to play with a win. And, uh, you know, that's just that's the mindset that we have going into each and every week. Everybody gets paid out there on that field. People forget paid. that. The yep. year we were 2-14, and 14, nine games, I think, one-score games, where if we just happened to get a ball – to bounce our way and we score. All of a sudden, it's a much different story. Hey, they snuck into the playoffs, like that whole thing, as opposed to being, oh, this is the worst team in the NFL. That gets forgotten about. Whenever you talk about wagons and tanking and all this type of shit, it's real. That's why the Giants thing, like, I assume after the game, there was a nice sense of relief. Oh, didn't play our best football. Got a dub. Let's move on and let's do what we got to do. Patriots next week is going to be fantastic. Ty has a question for you. Jordan, I understand the next man up mentality, but um, do you and other guys on the defense feel like you kind of have to carry more weight knowing that guys like Tredavious White and Milano, two all pro guys who are unbelievable, are out for the year? Like, is there conversation about that? How, like, you know, again, Next man up, we get it, but, you know, these are two unbelievable dudes, and do you guys feel like, you know, everyone kind of has to pull more weight trying to replace them? Absolutely, and I mean, there's no no way to replace a guy like Tredavious White or Matt Milano, um, two guys that have made so many plays for us over the last six, seven years they've been out here, and um, two all pros that, you know, like I said, just it's impossible to replace, and so, um, you know, we got good players behind them and uh, players that have played. A um, couple years, you know, Dorian Williams had a good game last week playing his first start. And so, but yeah, Mike and I, we talk, um, Taryn and a lot of it in TV, a lot of it comes down to us just being able to over communicate. Um, you know, we might, we might see something and, and think we have the communication down, but being able to just reiterate to whether it's Dorian, whether it's CB, um, reiterate the call, reiterate the, the checks um, and just, just that extra, just a little bit more, you know? And so um, it's not anything like putting pressure on, you know, anybody else is just continuing to evolve, continuing to understand, you know, who we are as a defense, how we got to communicate, and and then just, like I said, continuing to evolve. Dorian had a hell of a game last week. CB and Dane are very good corners, and Kair, very good corners. And as long as we're all playing on the same sheet of music, the same page, let coach and call a play. Oh. And, uh, you know, we could we could make the check and the check be wrong. But as long as we're all on the same sheet of music with the wrong check oh. and playing the, playing the same defense, that's I don't think any, a, whole lot, a whole lot of teams can beat us. If you were designing the sheet of music, what type of music would it be? Oh, we know. Ooh. Country. You wanted to play a Trump's thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Small town. Yeah, Jason yeah. Aldean. Yeah, Jason Aldean. Yeah. What is a small town song? Uh -huh. Yep. It's, it's e minor. Yep. Yep. Into that. Uh, yep. That's what we thought. No, what is your favorite type of music? Man, I like Spanish music. Um, I like Ozuna. Uh, hey. I like, uh, starting to like this, uh, this, this, this girl named Aniko. You guys gotta listen to her. her name is Aniko. Oh, yeah. She's a She's like an indie, indie, uh, indie writer, indie song artist. Um, she's very, I like listening to her. And I started playing the handpan. I don't know if you guys ever heard of the handpan, but uh, it's a really cool instrument instrument that I, I found out in Costa Rica. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, look it up. It's fun. It's fun. It's a fun instrument to play. I'll just send you guys a video. Is that what it's it looks fun. like? Or is it a drama? It's a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a pan. It's got uh, little notes around the side of it. It's called a handpan. You play it, you play around it. Oh, really yeah. Cool. I've really seen cool. it in the Caribbean, right? This is a... Uh... It might be in the Caribbean. It like might be in drum. Uh, it looks like a steel drum. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, an yeah. inverted steel drum. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's Absolutely. it sound like? It uh, sounds like real melodies, real music. Is that Gary V on the right? What are, you, are you going? It yeah, might Gary be. V. Is that Gary V on the right? Is that? <laughs> no, Hold on. It might be. I know that guy on the left, though. He, uh, I, I, those are, that's the guy I, I listen to and I take lessons from. 
That's your trainer. What? We just googled hands. No, that's hands. not like he has. He does YouTube videos on YouTube, and he and he has uh, still. He has ways to learn how to play. It's the like Mike dance. Posner. Yeah. So what songs are we? It does kind of have a little Posner feel. He'll be buried in Detroit, where the <laughs> stupid Red Wings are from. The whenever you <laughs> they beat the Pens last night. Yeah. yeah. Yikes. Hey, whenever you. What are we playing this thing? We're just playing alongside. To be honest, you. I'm just trying to learn how to play it. Um, there's is a hundred songs you could play. I don't know how, I don't know music. Like Hot I, Cross I, I, Buns or what are we playing? Play the yeah, 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 I can like, play, can I play the Hot hit? Cross Hot. Buns. Like that's, you know, I'm just trying to learn the melodies, the the, the tones. I've had it for about two months now. Oh, I got it at the beginning of the season. It's something that I kind of do when I go home, trying to learn how to play it. Can uh, you please figure out how to play our open? Yeah. Oh. With this hand pan? Absolutely. That would Absolutely. be. Next time I come on, I'll, I'll bring it. For next time I come on, I'll bring it and I'll play it on some. Yes. All right. I will. I will. Yes. I will. I might not be that great, but like, I'm gonna, right. I'll, I'll play y'all some. We'll just mute it. You know what I mean? We'll just do the video yeah, and then we'll yeah. play the <laughs> sound. No, it'll be great. It'll be great. All right. Last question here for you. We can't thank you enough for your time from Connor. Yeah, Jordan. Obviously, uh, we can all agree England sucks. Uh, <laughs> what specifically? England's awesome, by the way. Well, just in general, though, for, the, for this conversation speaking, fish and chips, driving on the wrong side of the road, they just suck. We, we, right, we can all agree on that. No. Nah. Dude, I don't all right, know. I'll, I'll ride this plane on my own then. I think England sucks, okay? Oh, How, geez. How, what were the challenges over there in London? Because obviously we all know that wasn't, you know, the Buffalo Bills team completely. It was a much different, uh, you know, team throughout the game. And you guys proved uh, once again that you guys are top of the league. But what were the challenges over there? What's the travel like going over? And did you do high knees on the plane like Russell Wilson when Denver flew over last year? Not do no high knees on the plane. Uh, we try to sleep as much as we can on the plane. We got out there Friday morning. Um, you know, it was uh, just to say, London is not one of my favorite places to play the game of football. Um, I would, uh, I would have rather played the game at home. Uh, they kind of took a home game away from us. Oh no! Uh, Whoa! I what? didn't know that from Buffalo. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, it was, you know, it's fine. But uh, it's fine. Bond was right. That turf sucked. Yeah, I'm just sorry it wasn't. And my whole idea, my whole in psyche, the moment I heard that we were going to London to play, I'm thinking we were playing on that nice soccer grass. So since whenever the schedule came out, I'm thinking we were playing on Messi's soccer grass out there. I don't know. Like some nice grass this long, you know, just we get out there. Probably, probably that Wednesday or that Tuesday or Wednesday, I find out we're playing on turf. And it just, I'm like, it's like we're going to London to play on turf. It almost doesn't even make sense because they can roll the grass. They can roll the where we played at a Tottenham. They have grass underneath that turf, so they roll the turf out for us to play on it. It made no sense to me. Whatever. I love yeah. that. Hey, did you hear what happened? The World Cup was like, hey NFL teams, you need to put grass down if we're going to play. And the NFL tells the England teams, hey. You need to put some hard ass turf out there yeah. if we're gonna come play. That's a, quite a different. That's quite a different opinion there. It doesn't, make, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. But it is what it is. You know, it ain't what it ain't. So just move on. Yeah. Keep and, going. And it always will be until it's not. Yeah, like, so be. did you get to see England at all or no? Yeah, I, uh, my wife was out there. Went to went and had some tea. I went oh, had some gross tea and some crumpets. Uh, it was a really crazy experiment or experience. Uh, went to the London Bridge. Saw the Big Ben. Um, there's so many people in London. I don't understand how it's just, I mean, it's almost overwhelming the amount of people that are like downtown in London, just walking around, just going to place to place. Oh, wow. so you didn't enjoy people. London. You didn't enjoy London. England sucks. You said it. You going back it was, soon? It, it was, it was cool to see. Am I going back? I'm more of a tropical, tropical. Oh, okay. Place. Not going to London. I, okay. Guns okay. out. Yeah. Palm yeah. trees. Yeah. 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 My I type like of place. So. Okay. So I can, I can respect that. Whenever we walked around though, when I walked around, I was just trying to talk to people. You know, I wanted to hear the accent, first of all. I wanted to hear how maybe a word would pop up that I didn't know sounded awesome, like controversy, for instance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As soon as I heard, like, English people say that, I'm like, that's how I'm saying controversy forever. Like, as soon as you – so I'm trying to get – everybody over there had a great personality. Yes. Everybody over there had a I great personality. And I don't know if there was actually funny or just as funny as the way they said it. So, like, <laughs> I enjoyed being there a lot. We lost, though. I mean, Blake, Blake Bortles, the boat, punted a ball into the stands in our face after running one in. And then we had to wait for their flight to take back. Not everybody loves it, Jordan. Yeah. Not everybody loves yeah. that London game, I don't see, think. I can see why. I can see why. I can definitely see why. But uh, experience, to say the least, uh, super blessed to be able to go out there and, and, and be able to experience that. But not something that I'm not a place I'm just going to go on in my off time uh, when I have some free time. All right. They said expansion draft coming. You're right in line to be a part of the London yeah. 
Destroyers. That's right. Uh-oh, yep. whatever it is. Destroyers. I don't know about that one. I don't oh. know about that one. Hey, have an incredible season. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you us. guys so much for having me on. I appreciate you. Can't wait to hear the man pad. The man pan. Man pan. Man pan. Man pan. Yeah. Next time. Man pan. Man pan. Man pan. You, do you play guitar or any other instruments? No, I don't play guitar. I don't play guitar. I tried to learn how to play the uh, the harmonica. It's really oh. tough. Um, but I've been playing the hand pan for about, about two months. Getting better. Next time I come on, I'll bring it to you guys. I and keep having A Rod on. I love listening to A Rod. Oh he yeah, talk about real stuff. Man. So keep having him come on here, waking these people yeah. up. Hell yeah! yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. You gotta yes, wake sir. Yeah. 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 Gotta wake up. Hell yeah! I don't like he wants to partner. I don't think I know what you're talking about. That debate. Wake him up. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you? When he talks football. Tell him, he Jordan. Talks scheme and stuff. No, yeah, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Tell him, Jordan. All right. Well, <laughs> we appreciate you joining us as well. And I'm happy to hear you're a fan because I've heard from a lot of people they are not. Oh. Yeah. So uh, it's great to hear that you're on the side of his conversations because, uh, I mean, it's phenomenal. It, it, the, like, I'm not diving into it too much. I will, actually. I don't know enough about that world to do a full conversation about it, but I do know that Tony Fauci, mm -hmm. Dr. Tony Fauci, <laughs> right. was the most powerful human on Earth just a few years ago. Oh, yeah. And now on Tuesdays, he's got to sit in his house with his team and be like, what is this fucking asshole football player? Yeah. <laughs> what a thing. That's so dumb to but be But we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it, though. We have to We we have to talk about it. And it needs to be continuous conversation yes. for us to talk about, for us to continue to evolve oh. as a human as humans, you know, it's not me versus you. It's not this versus that. It's us together, figuring this out together, continuing to talk, yeah. continue to learn. Yeah. And it's it, it's crazy world we live in, boys, but I appreciate you having him on. I definitely continue to support his No, life. and also I think the conversation has to happen for the future, you know, for all of us. Absolutely. This isn't a us versus you type thing no, or no. you versus us or him versus them or no. anything like that. It's like we all went through something that was fucking crazy. And it's like Absolutely. we hope that it'll never happen again, obviously, forever, because what a wild thing. But there's a chance it will. And when <laughs> it does, we have to remind ourselves of some of the shit that happened. Yeah. Like we weren't allowed to make eye contact at one point. Yep. Uh huh. Remember they were saying, "Don't look at each other in the eyes if you're going to wear glasses." It's like, what the fuck is this thing? And it was like, I have no idea. But we all survived. We're here. We did it. Hell yeah. We did it. We made it. We did it. <laughs> Woo! Lost a lot of great people though. It was a damn shame. It was terrible. Uh, but you're not one of them. We appreciate the hell out of you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys for Jordan having me Jordan Poyer. Yeah.